When Democrats actually do good things, there's a windfall effect. So in other words, doing something good has value in and of itself because of the positive effects, but also you bait the Republicans, namely the Republicans in media and Republican politicians, you bait them into attacking you on your strengths. So what just happened recently is Cori Bush slept on the Capitol Hill steps and ended up putting a lot of pressure, including media pressure, on Biden to do something on the eviction moratorium. And uh, he felt the pressure and he ended up acting. So we just got news today that he called Lawrence Tribe of Harvard and asked him for some sort of legal justification, rationalization, whatever you want to call it, in order to um, extend the eviction moratorium. Now, to be fair, it's actually technically not extending the eviction moratorium. It's coming up with a new eviction moratorium that's drastically different from the other one so that it's initially legal. And that's what happened. So Biden felt the pressure because of Cori Bush and because of the media. His entire staff, we're learning from reporting, was like, no, you can't do anything about this. You have to leave it exactly as it is. And there's nothing we can do on the eviction moratorium. It's on Congress. Biden then called a legal expert. The legal expert said, no, you can do this. It just has to be a totally new eviction ban. It has to be reworked and tweaked so that the provisions are different. And then it can go through litigation again and it either gets slapped down or not. But at least you buy time for Congress to maybe do something. So that takes us to Mark Levin. Mark Levin is one of the dumbest, most smug right wing pundits out there. I mean, he's as bad as it gets. So he's on TV whining all the time. His whole philosophy can be summed up like this. Republican good, Democrat bad. Just mindless drivel, partisan tribalism garbage. So look at what he said about Biden extending the eviction ban. Now, mind you, this is without a doubt one of the best things Biden has done because it's going to save probably millions and millions of people from being evicted. Regular people, Democrats and Republicans, working people through no fault of their own, had their economic lives turned upside down. They can't pay the bills. Joe Biden stepped in because of the pressure put on him by Cori Bush and said, I have to extend the eviction moratorium. Okay, here's what Mark Levin says about this. Quote, this street politician from Wilmington, Delaware, street politician, so he's already sprinkling in like classism. Half the time these guys pretend to be populists and for working people, and now he's saying this street politician from Delaware, which again means this, is, this was like a lower class politician. This is a street guy over here, already sprinkling in the classism. The dumbest man to ever serve in the Senate, the dumbest man to ever be VP, is now the dumbest man to ever be president. I have a lot of problems with Biden. I don't think Biden is particularly intelligent. I have no doubt that Joe Biden is more intelligent than both Donald Trump and George W. Bush, and those are only recent examples. Obviously, I have no clue how intelligent like fucking Van Buren or William Howard Taft was, but the idea that he's the dumbest man to ever be president is such an insane stretch, and Mark Levin knows that's a stretch. Because he knows what his job is. His job is just to partisan cheerlead the Republicans and bash the Democrats no matter what. Doesn't matter if your criticisms are accurate. This is an incredibly stupid criticism. He says, he's going to go down as the greatest disaster president. Biden is going to be the greatest disaster president. Just the fact that he doesn't own slaves enough makes him better than the presidents who own slaves. Just the fact that he didn't put the policies in place that led to the Great Depression makes him better than, like, fucking Ho Herbert Hoover. Now, again, I could go on, but we'll leave it at that. Just so hyperbolic and over the top for no fucking reason, Mark Levin is. He continues. He just defied a Supreme Court decision. He knows that the CDC doesn't have the power to extend these moratoriums on rent. He says, we're going to do it anyway. He just violated the federal constitution. Republicans, have you ever heard of the words impeachment? This man just violated a Supreme Court decision. Mark Levin wants to impeach Joe Biden because Joe Biden did a new eviction ban that will keep millions of people from being kicked out into the street and being homeless. Again, those people include Democrats and Republicans. He thinks he should be impeached over one of the best fucking things that he's done. I have no words. I have no words because you know what? Mark Levin is a lawyer. 
Mark Levin knows and understands that what Biden did is perfectly legal. So again, just to explain it to you, he didn't extend the previous eviction ban because that would have been unconstitutional because there was a Supreme Court decision in late June that said, as it's constructed, it is unconstitutional and you can't do it. So he came up with a whole new eviction ban. And what he did is originally, by the way, Trump originally did the eviction bans. Trump. Now, did Mark Levin say anything about how he thinks that's unconstitutional when Trump did it? No, he didn't. Now, by the way, the nature of the Constitution hasn't changed. So if it was unconstitutional uh, when Biden does it, it would be unconstitutional when Trump, do Trump does it. He didn't say anything about Trump doing that. In fact, he was sucking Trump off as, as, oh my God, he's saving the country. Look at everything he's doing to protect us from COVID. So the guy is just a clear hack. But the, the legal rationale comes from the fact that this is a new eviction ban. It's not the old eviction ban, which applied to 100% of the country. This only applies to about 90% of the country. And the idea is in high transmission areas where the Delta variant, which is a new variant, is spreading, that's where they're going to do it. And the CDC was very careful. They changed the language. They made sure that now this is a new order that stands on its own. And then, yes, now it's going to go through the court system again. And perhaps the Supreme Court does say this is unconstitutional. If they do indeed rule that, then it'll be slapped down. But we have to get to that point. We have to get to that point. And as Biden said, whether or not this is constitutional, and it may be either one, I'm buying time for Congress to act and do something positive to to come up with a new legal eviction ban. Because by the way, the ruling on the Supreme Court is not that you can never do an eviction ban. The ruling was you could do it, but it has to go through Congress for the original one. So he's saying I'm buying time for Congress. And also he's buying time for the 40 plus billion dollars in rent relief to get out to people that the states are sitting on. That money's already been allocated for that, but the states are sitting on it. So in other words, what Biden is doing here is perfectly legal at least as of right now, and it's a temporary stopgap in order to get help to people who desperately need it. This fucking idiot says impeach him over one of the best things he's ever done. He knows this isn't impeachment worthy. And this just goes to show you how unserious these clowns are. Because by the way, is there no argument to impeach Biden? Of course there are arguments to impeach Biden. Just like Noam Chomsky said, if the Nuremberg laws were upheld, every post-World War II president would have been hanged. By the same token, you absolutely can impeach any post-World War II president for a number of the things that they did. So, for example, Biden illegally bombed Somalia. Biden illegally bombed Syria. There's a number of things he's done. So you can impeach him for that, but they don't even focus on the serious issues where maybe you have an argument because they love it when you bomb brown people. So instead, he's focusing on one of the best things he's ever done. But guess what, guys? And this is really the, the reason why I'm doing this segment. This is yet another reason why Democrats wake up, do good things. Now, I get it. A lot of you guys are corrupt, so you're never going to want to do good things. But when you do happen to do good things, they're, they have value on their own merit because you're helping people. But beyond that, there's also the political windfall of you just baited Fox News into coming out against eviction moratoriums in the middle of a pandemic and an economic downturn. So there are going to be plenty of Republicans who are just saved from being evicted who are going to look at Mark Levin commenting and say, hmm, sounds like this guy doesn't want to help me. Sounds like this guy would have me out on the street. So go ahead, do good things and bait them into attacking good things. If you do universal health care, they're going to attack universal health care. If you do a $15 minimum wage, they're going to attack a $15 minimum wage. And then your poll numbers will go up and up and up and up and up. And theirs will go down and down and down and down and down. And you can double down and you can triple down and you can argue for these good positions because these good positions are correct. They're good when it comes to policy and they're good when it comes to polis politics. So Ah, just Jesus Christ, it, he's so fucking dumb. He's so dumb. But you know what? I sh we should be thanking them because this just makes it a lot easier for Democrats. Now, the fact of the matter is um, the Democrats are down in the congressional race in the generic ballot six points right now. So that means that the Republicans who've been talking about nothing but Dr. Seuss and Mr. Potato Head and random culture war bullshit like Simone Biles, they're somehow beating the Democrats. You want to know why? Because when the Democrats do good things, they don't brag about it. And the Democrats aren't fighting for nearly enough good things. So instead, the Democrats are barking all day and night about the January 6th commission. What do we need a commission for? What do we need an investigation for? We already know what happened. Trump 
baited his followers, his most ardent followers, into trying to do an attempted coup, an attempted insurrection, and it failed miserably. That's what happened. We know what happened. You don't need an investigation. The more Democrats talk about that, the more they slip down in the polls. So wake up. Don't do it. That's not politically savvy. That's idiotic. Either brag about the good things you did, like the child tax credit uh, or and the stimulus checks and the $15 minimum wage for federal workers, or fight for more good things. So this is one example of a good thing Biden did. I'd be bragging about doing the eviction extension all the time, eviction moratorium extension all the time, and bait these idiots into attacking you on your strengths. So every now and then when you think, you know, the Democrats are politically not savvy, that's obvious. But you think the right is politically savvy? No, they're, they have one gear. And that gear is stuck in attack mode. But it'll misfire if you, if the Democrats ever happen to do good things. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. So there you have it. Impeach Biden over protecting millions of people from going homeless. Yeah, brilliant idea.